Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn how to enable Swagger in your uh, Flask API. All right. So for that, we need to install this package uh, using this pip install flask hyphen rest plus. Once you install that, um, then it's pretty easy. You can just follow their uh, documentation. As you can see, it's like a quick start, and they are just like, like explaining you uh, like whatever it is required to make your Swagger up and ready. All right. And there is one more thing. If you scroll to the bottom there is a full example itself is there <clears throat> i mean like they have a simple uh, one controller in that they have added all three all the methods like get post uh, put all crud operation i mean to say and first i'll show you my demo and then i'll show you what is the different which i am trying to show you in this video so let me run it if it's not running all right Okay, so this to do app is a uh, is the same example what they have shown in their website <coughs> and the custom app which I have added. All right, so let me go through the uh, the example one first, like uh, from their website. So they are having like pretty much uh, all the current operations. So there is a one method called get all. So if you try out, it will give you all the tasks which is already there in the memory right now. They are not using any DB or something. And if you want to create a new task, simple thing, you just add uh, let's say some task. <clears throat> you can just some task or edit and the id of the task is 45 all right so now let me call this <clears throat> get if i pass this 45 and then you can see that that the particular item is coming and if you want to just uh, <clears throat> edit just pass the id let's say i want to make it one two three and the id is nothing but 45 if i execute and then call this cat you can see that uh, it got up not this one sorry here yeah, it got updated all right so if you want to delete just uh, pass this id over here So item is got deleted now if i try to get all the item should not be there in the list you can see the item is not there all right so this is their example very simple one what i have added is just uh, one more controller which you can see like a custom app in that i'm trying to add uh, to, uh, one more thing i'm trying to show you is so like a query parameter <coughs> So for example, let's say um, you you have one mandatory parameter and like uh, you want to add some more uh, like a query optional parameters, right? So for example, let's say if you want to call get API, so this is, this is a without any parameter, <coughs> plain simple one. So if you call it, it's just returning some data. And if you call another get API, which is having, let's say, which is saying get with one required and one query parameter, it, it's up to you depending on your project requirement so for example let's say mobile number is a mandatory thing and then address is not optional it could be anything by the way just it will return you something if you want to put some value it will be returning you the same value pretty much easy all right so there is one more thing so if you see the address was there if i uh, call the put api again the address is common if i show you delete address is common what if you want to add the query parameter only to a specific one or a specific method so what you need to do so for example in the post query what i did it it is having one mandatory parameter and two optional parameters if you want to pass like a one two three as a mobile number and address as a one uh, att whatever it is if you execute it you will be able to get that all right so that's pretty much about the demo part and i'll just show you one more thing yeah so whatever models i'm using so for example let's say to do app is there <clears throat> over here let me show you so so to do is saying i just want only the task and then in return what it's returning it's returning an id also so there are two models right like it, this is a dtu and this is a response i'm mean like a dtu res request dtu and the response dtu and in this record there is a like, like that's the beauty of swagger like you can see the controller like a model also so whoever is a consumer they can see what property they have to bind so this is a to do request in the uh, to do response so this is the request means this is the user will pass and this is the we will the server will return to the user or any client i mean to say 
all right now let's go to the code i'll stop this one <coughs> All right, so for, uh, how you will be uh, able to uh, implement this one that I'll show you right away. So what you do is you simply create a plain uh, uh, Python API, a Python project. In that you just need to, uh, you know, implement, uh, let's just decorate those, uh, like have those, um, uh, just follow this example I'm going to say this one. You will, like just import these two by default properties. Once you uh, import it, if you follow their example, they are, these registration won't be there because they are having only one control so there is one catch over here so for example if you follow this example you will be able to get only one controller but if you were in your in a normal project we may have more than one controller. so to achieve that you need to you know follow their document and it's really um, you need to dig deep then only you will understand so what I am trying to show in this example is like how I did that part so for that you need to use uh, one concept called blueprint same thing it's they have uh, explained everything in their documentation but i'm just showing over here so it will be very easy for you to implement the same all right so what you need to do the blueprint means like you need to create separate separate namespace nothing but controller and then add those into the blueprint uh, and then register the blueprint to the your uh, flask app which you can see over here so i'm registering that blueprint and blueprint is having that api and the, I mean like the API is having the blueprint and blueprint is having all the uh, namespace in the end. All right, so for that, what you need to follow is structure. You create some folder called endpoints or something. In that, you have you can keep all your controllers so or uh, namespace. So in I in my case, it was uh, like a uh, custom app and the nothing but the second one is a to do app. So to do app is very simple one. <coughs> it is having four methods: put, delete, and the get and post. And nothing but card operation so put means it it, it decorated with two things just uh, see over here there is one first one is expect means what we are expecting from the outside world <coughs> that means the request what kind of request so and there are marshall with depending what kind of data you want to return so these two you have to create two uh, what you need to create two variables i'm like so you just need to tell like uh, what is the requirement I mean, what is the request looks like so in my case the task name is the property which I'm interested in what is the name what is the description that kind of information it is whether it's a mandatory or not something like that that information you will be giving what kind of response you are returning that kind of information you will be adding those properties actually this nothing but model you need to create these two models I mean to say <clears throat> once you are able to create that simply uh, like you will be able to take the ID from the, you know, the query parameter sorry from the root parameters and then you just uh, iterate through the release it's a simple example and if the item is there you return it otherwise return the error depending on your case delete is also if the item is there in the list delete it otherwise return the error or something get if the item is there return the item otherwise say no item is there <clears throat> all right and uh, this is the way you need to uh, decorate all the uh, controllers or a namespace you want to say the route and the whatever the format you want to be like api v1 or something it depending on your something is better yeah <coughs> so and this is also not mandatory you no need to say you can say simply like id also no need to say type it depends on you all right <coughs> let's go to the con uh, custom one in custom uh, what i was showing you i was showing you like uh, how i edit the query parameters so for that what you need to do you simple you just say i want to have a parameter like a simple parameter where mobile was the mandatory parameter in all the apis and address and email was the optional and address was common in all the apis so if you want to have a uh, mandatory parameter that you doc uh, decorate at the beginning of the at the class level <coughs> and if you want any parameter which is common or any optional parameter which is common across that you that also you decorate at the class level and you just simply say params and give the property name and whatever property name you want to give it and give the description you can have any default value if you want to have it this right now i didn't add the type if you want to add a type you just simply say comma and type and set the type like a string or whatever is the type of that variable for me to set the property and then which is the same like follow the to do concept say to do api i mean just decorate the api what is the response you will be returning I am not showing Marshall that those two because it's a very simple API. Otherwise, you need to add those uh, two things also, which I showed over here. I mean to say these two, like what is the request looks like, what is the response looks like, those things also you can add it. 
and uh, for example if you want to fetch any uh, query parameter right so what you need to do just use this request uh, dot args dot get and pass the uh, your query parameter where uh, key name and then take the value simple as it and for example if you want to make a query parameter to a very specific or i mean to say any specific uh, method or a like so what you need to do just decorate and instead of decorating at a class level you decorate at a method level and they say the same thing like a uh, uh, api dot doc params and give the uh, optional parameter of your name and give a description default value if you want to pass it if you don't want to pass it remove it and then if you want to pass it like a specific type then you add the type simple and how you will fetch it again request.ours.get and give the key name email address or whatever it is and then you will be able to return it all right and that's it so for example these two are nothing but namespace so i created api dot namespace the namespace name is customer and the class and the file is in a custom app and the second one is the you can see over here if you see that at the beginning are like api dot namespace then to do app what you need to do you need to register these two into api which is nothing but over here <coughs> you want here actually in the main yeah oh, it's over here so namespace as you can see it's going to that class right there's the one also it's going to this one all right and what you need to do then api you just need to put it and, and in this api you add that blueprint and then blueprint you register the app that's it nothing much no big deal that's pretty much about this video thank you very much